I have it in my pants, and I have it in my jacket, and it's in countless other places, in my luggage, rucksacks, bags and shoes. You'll even find it in bagpipes, fishing nets and spacesuits. Yet it's so simple that you probably don't know what I'm talking about. It's the zipper. But for all its simplicity, it took many eccentric innovators and lots of incremental improvement to make it work. And in the end, it took even longer to develop a functioning zipper than to invent the airplane or the electronic computer. It began in mid-19th century America when Elias Howe, the inventor of the sewing machine, searched for a way of saving time with a new way to fasten clothes faster. He invented the first primitive version of the zipper, but it never made it to market. It rusted easily and often split or snagged on the clothes. Then, in 1893, Whitcomb Judson invented a new version of the zipper. According to legend, this portly engineer felt it difficult to bend over to lace his boots and was looking for help. But his invention, a chain of wire hooks, got stuck and broke open without warning. Judson did start the Universal Fastener Company, though, where more improvements were made. And they got lucky, because they were eventually joined by a Swedish-born electrical engineer named Gideon Sundback. Sundback tinkered with the old designs and in 1914 he unveiled Hookless No. 2, a version that relied on closely packed interlocking teeth. Sundback had invented the modern zipper. The zipper got its name when the B.F. Goodrich company began to use Sundback's invention in their rubber boots. They liked the sipping sound it made so much that they named it the zipper. But it took a lot of experiments and marketing to convince people to try it. The selling point in the 1930s was that its use in children's clothing would make them more independent. Another was that its use in men's trousers would prevent them from the possibility of unintentional and embarrassing disarray. Once people learned of the benefit of the new and improved invention, they began to think of its potential use in other ways and in more products. That's the story of invention. Having an idea is not enough. It takes trial and error, continual experimentation and improvements, and it has to be tested by the market and adjusted according to the market's verdict. Time zips by before you have a successful product. But once you do, the reward can be breathtaking. Today, factories produce enough zippers every year to wrap around the world more than a hundred times. Hey, check out these other great videos from Free to Choose Network. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel to get updated on episodes of New and Improved with me, Johan Norberg.